Good morning, Mike. Managing Directors and Global Partners, here is your news brief for Tuesday, August 25th, 2015. Stocks in China opened lower again this morning, falling another 7.6% after shedding 8.5% yesterday. The continued slump prompted the People's Bank of China to cut interest rates and lower the reserve ratio. The move is being widely interpreted as recognition that direct government intervention in the stock market via the Plunge Protection Team has failed and that central bank stimulus is a better tool to prop up stock prices. Here is a list of the policy changes. Effective tomorrow, a quarter point cut to the benchmark lending rate down to 4.6%. A quarter point cut to the benchmark deposit rate down to 1.75%. Effective September 6th, deposit reserve ratio reduced by half a point to 18%. An additional half of a point cut to the reserve ratio for rural agriculture-centered banks. And a 300 basis point cut to the reserve ratio for auto finance leasing companies. This is the fifth interest rate cut by the PBOC since last November and the third reserve ratio requirement cut so far this year. We're not sure why the PBOC believes the rate cuts will work this time since they haven't worked the prior four times and the Federal Reserve recently announced that it has determined that QE and zero interest rates haven't worked in the U.S. So far, the new policies have failed to stop the slide in China, but stock futures in the U.S. responded positively, at least at first. On a side note, the 588-point drop in the Dow marks the first time in history that there have been consecutive days of 500-point losses or more. Next, in the wake of yesterday's continuing stock sell-off, Latin American currencies fell to 22-year lows. The Bloomberg J.P. Morgan Latin American Currency Index is now at November 1992 levels, and specifically the Mexican peso is now at all-time lows against the dollar, as is Colombia's peso. Its currency fell the most out of the top 31 largest global currencies. Meanwhile, in Venezuela, the world's highest current inflation has left store shelves bare, and in Chile and Peru, the collapse in the prices of commodities like copper and zinc have caused a steep decline in the country's export revenue. And the same is true in Brazil. Vale, the world's largest iron ore producer stock price, fell to 11-year lows after losing as much as 12% yesterday. Other factors that are affecting the region's economies are government corruption, over-indebtedness, and in Venezuela's case, wage and price controls that have made it uneconomical for business owners to stay in business. And finally, in the UK, Damien McBride, a former advisor to Gordon Brown, is telling people to stock up on canned goods and bottled water. He is also urging them to keep an emergency supply of currency in their homes in the event of a bank holiday. Via Twitter, he warned, quote, don't assume banks and cash points will be open or bank cards will work, unquote. His last piece of advice was to establish a rally point with family members if transportation or communications get cut off. McBride worked for Britain's prime minister during the financial crisis in 2008. Not surprisingly, he credits the government for preventing a banking system failure back then and believes that, quote, what's coming is 20 times that scale, unquote. What he apparently fails to realize is that the government's actions in 2008 did not solve the economic problems that brought the financial system to the brink of collapse. They just delayed them until a future date and made them become the 20 times worse that he predicts. Some skeptics ridiculed his dire assessment of the situation as being over the top, but our opinion is that everyone should do their own analysis and take whatever precautions allow them to sleep better at night. After all, it is better to be prepared for a crisis that never comes than be totally unprepared for one that does. And that's your news brief.